Hello everyone, my name is Jagdish Atole and in this video we will discuss about one more failure theory that is maximum principal strain theory. In the previous videos we discussed about maximum principal stress theory or Rankine's theory and maximum shear stress theory or guest stress cast theory. If you haven't watched those videos then you can watch that with the link provided in the description. And in this video we will discuss about maximum principal strain theory which is also referred as Saint Venom's theory. Do subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any new learning videos from the design gigs. The maximum principal strain theory is more appropriate or more suitable for all types of materials like ductile material, brittle material, and for the materials under the hydrostatic pressure. So this theory was proposed by scientist St. Venant's. That's why this theory is also referred as St. Venant's theory. According to this theory, the failure of material or a component will occur when the maximum value of principal strength developed in the body exceeds the value of strength corresponding to the yield point of that material. Mathematically, the condition of failure according to this theory can be written as epsilon 1 greater than epsilon p, where this epsilon 1 is the maximum value of strain and epsilon p is the permissible strain. Now this permissible strain is the ratio of value of strain corresponding to the yield point of that material to the factor of safety. Means permissible strain is equal to the yield strain divided by factor of safety. Now therefore in order to avoid the condition of failure of the component the maximum value of principal strain developed in the body must be less than the value of the strength corresponding to the yield point of that material. Now let's assume that the material is homogeneous and isotropic and the material behaves in a linear elastic manner means it obeys the Hooke's law. So we have the relation between the stress and strain as sigma is equal to E into epsilon. So this is the Hooke's law for normal stress strain in uniaxial dimension. So we can write this equation for strain as epsilon is equal to sigma divided by E. Now if you put the value of epsilon in the permissible strain equation which is permissible strain EP or epsilon P is equal to yield strain divided by factor of safety. So then this will get permissible strain is equal to yield stress divided by E into factor of safety. And for the safe design epsilon 1 which is the maximum strain in the body that should be less than the permissible strain. We have one more relation in terms of Poisson's ratio that is mu which gives the linear relationship between the lateral strain and longitudinal strain as mu is equal to epsilon that is like lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. From this lateral strain can be written as epsilon lateral that is lateral strain is equal to mu times epsilon longitudinal. Now the condition for safe design for triaxial case, now consider the principal stresses for these three dimensional condition or triaxial conditions as the principal stresses are sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 and the corresponding strain induced in the component as epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and epsilon 3. And let us assume that the epsilon 1 greater than epsilon 2 greater than epsilon 3. Now according to the concept of generalized Hooke's law, we can write the relation between these principal stresses and the principal strengths in the terms of Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio as epsilon 1 is equal to sigma 1 divided by E minus mu times sigma 2 divided by E minus mu times sigma 3 divided by E. If we take 1 by E as common then we can write the equation as epsilon 1 is equal to 1 by E into sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 plus sigma 3. Now this is the equation for epsilon 1. Similarly, we can write the equation for epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 as epsilon 2 is equal to 1 by E into sigma 2 minus mu times of sigma 3 plus 1 and epsilon 3 is equal to 1 by E into sigma 3 minus mu times sigma 1 plus sigma 2. Now for safe design, the epsilon 1 should be less than or equal to epsilon yt that is yield strain. It can be written as 1 by E into sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 plus sigma 3 less than or equal to sigma y divided by E. We can take the 1 by E as common from this and we can cancel that from both the side that gives sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 plus sigma 3 less than sigma y. Now considering the factor of safety 
This equation can be written as sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 plus sigma 3 less than sigma y divided by factor of safety. So this is the safe criteria for three-dimensional or triaxial loading conditions according to this theory. Now for biaxial loading, the principal stresses are sigma 1 and sigma 2 and the principal stresses are epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 and here the epsilon 1 greater than epsilon 2. Now, according to the generalized Hooke's law, the epsilon 1 is equal to sigma 1 divided by E minus mu times sigma 2 divided by E. If we take 1 by E as common and then we can re rewrite this equation as epsilon 1 is equal to 1 by E into sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2. Similarly, for epsilon 2, uh, we can write the equation as epsilon 2 is equal to 1 by E into sigma 2 minus mu times sigma 1. Now, for safe design, the epsilon 1 should be less than the yield strain. So, and the yield strain epsilon y can be written in terms of yield stress as epsilon y times the e. So, therefore, the equation for the safe design can be written as 1 by e into sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 less than sigma y divided by e. Now, cancelling the e from both the sides, we will get sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 less than sigma y. And if we consider the factor of safety, then the above equation becomes sigma 1 minus mu sigma 2 less than sigma y divided by factor of safety. That is the yield stress divided by factor of safety. So, this is the safe design criteria for biaxial loading conditions according to the maximum principle strain theory. Now, for the region of safety, the boundaries of the region of safety is for this theory or the equation for the region of safety is are sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 is equal to sigma y can be drawn on the graph like this. Another equation of the region of safety is sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 is equal to minus sigma y and this can be drawn on the graph like this. The next equation we have is sigma 2 minus mu times sigma 1 is equal to sigma y. On the graph it will be like this and the last equation for the region of safety is sigma 2 minus mu times sigma 1 is equal to minus sigma y. It can be drawn or it can be shown on the graph like this. Now this is the region of safety for this theory. So according to the maximum principal strain theory, if we consider the point in this region and if we use the, the coordinates of that point to design the component, then that component will not fail or it will be considered as a safe design. And if the point lies outside this region of safety and if that point coordinates are used to design the size of the component, then the component will not be considered as a safe, it will fail. Now let's solve one numerical according to this theory. The question is a machine element is subjected to the stresses as sigma x is equal to 60 megapascal, sigma y is equal to 45 megapascal. If it is having the yield stress 53 megapascal, then find the factor of safety using this maximum principal strain theory taking the Poisson's ratio as 0.3. Now from the question, the given data is sigma x is equal to 60 megapascal, sigma y is equal to 45 megapascal and tau xy is equal to 30 megapascal and sigma y is 353 megapascal and the Poisson's ratio is 0.3. So the principal stresses can be calculated as sigma 1 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 bracket square plus tau xy square and sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 minus under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 bracket square plus tau xy square. Substituting the given values, we will get sigma 1 is equal to 60 plus 45 by 2 plus under root of 60 minus 45 by 2 bracket square plus 30 square. That gives sigma 1 is equal to 83.42 megapascal. And for sigma 2, it will be 60 plus 45 divided by 2 minus under root of 60 minus 45 by 2 bracket square plus 30 square. That gives sigma 2 is equal to 21.58. So sigma max and sigma min we found with these equations. So according to this maximum principal strain theory, we know the relation between the sigma 1, sigma 2, mu and the yield stress and the factor of safety from the equation as sigma 1 minus mu times sigma 2 is equal to sigma y that is the yield stress divided by factor of safety by substituting the value 83.42 that is the value of sigma 1 minus 0 0.3 that is the value of Poisson's ratio into 21.5 that is the value of sigma 2 is equal to 353 that is the yield stress given as 353 divided by factor of safety that gives factor of safety as 
4.59. So the answer for factor of safety is 4.59. Now, though the maximum principal strain theory is appropriate theory for ductile materials, brittle materials, and for the materials under the hydrostatic pressure, this theory is not much used for the design purpose for ductile material because it overestimate or it over predict the elastic strength of the ductile materials. That's why it is not a very popular theory of the failure. So this is all about the maximum principal strain theory or St. Venant's theory. Stay tuned with the Design Geek for more learning videos. Thank you.